Howdy, everyone. All right, once again, it's been a while since I videotaped. I've been out here uh, working pretty much every day now for quite a while. And once again, I don't exactly remember where I had left off on my last video. So this is going to be another kind of uh, catch-up type of thing, bring you up to speed on what I have been doing. It's basically more of the same. It's just uh, creating um, wire harnesses and figuring out how to route the wires and figuring out how to get everything connected. Again, it's a little bit different with the VPX because um, the VPX has all of your um, circuit breaker functions. Those are all solid state circuit breakers internally and it handles all of the switching and it handles all of the power. And you have to program this using uh, a, a computer, a PC with an uh, Ethernet cable, which I have not done yet. But the, the basic principle is you bring your power wires. So let's, let's say right now I'm working on the uh, lights for the wingtips, right? So let's say you bring in your strobe lights the wires that carry the power for the strobe lights come in and they get connected to one of these black connectors here. Those are uh, your power connectors. There are two more on this side. So for instance, uh, let's just say this orange wire is the power wire for my strobe lights. So I have one wire for the right wing and then I've got another wire for the left wing those get coupled together, and I, I personally decided to put them on this plug on a particular pin. It doesn't really matter which plug you use. It doesn't really matter which pin you use. When you look at the wiring diagram for the wingtip lights, I'm using the Zip Tip 3 wing, uh, wingtips. This is the wiring diagram for the Zip Tip 3s. And here you can see where power comes in, and then you've got your switches, and then you've got your wires. So that orange wire that I was just showing you is the strobe. So those two wires get uh, coupled together. You have a left wing and a right wing. Those get coupled together. And then these basically represent the connection on the, uh, the VPX that I just showed you. So I bring the wires together, and then I connect them to the VPX. The next thing that I need to do is take a switch and wire the switch to one of these D subs. And then I can go into the VPX with the Ethernet cable using their software and I can tell the VPX through the computer that I want that plug, that particular pin on that plug that has the orange wires connected to it, I want that to be turned on by this particular switch on this particular pin on this particular D sub. So you can take any port, basically, any power port, and through the software programming, you can couple it to any switch, any connection, anything that you plug into the D subs. That's the basics behind it. Of course, there are exceptions. Um, there's other things that you need to concern yourself with, which I'm not going to get into right now. One of the things being, when you look at the, the manual for the VPX itself, you'll find these pinout diagrams. Now, the VPX has two internal power supplies, so you can have a little bit of redundancy. There's an A bank power supply, and there's a B bank power supply. So you can put some of your items on the ACE power supply. You can put some items on the B power supply if you want some kind of redundancy. You have to go through the manual and find out what pins on the VPX are powered by the A power supply and what pins are powered by the B power supply. The other thing is each pin on each uh, connector has an amp rating. So you can see here, so this J8 connector 
pin 1 has a 5 amp capable circuit. These are also programmable. These represent the max amps for each individual pin. So this 15 amp, the J10 connector pin 6, that is a 15 amp circuit up to 15 amps and it's powered by the B power supply. I can program this again using the software. I can program this to be anything between 1 and 15 amps. That is, these are the connectors for the power. This is one of the connectors for the, um, the D sub. So what I need, what I have here is basically, um, you can see that this says wigwag. These two pins are power pins just like these. These two pins on the J1 connector, pin 1 and 2, you, those are up to 2 amps. I can program them for either 1 or 2 amps, and both of those are powered by the A uh, power supply. I don't have my other sheet out at the moment, but there's another pinout like this for the J2 connector, which is also a D-sub, and that one is where you wire all your switches. So I would wire my switches into that D-sub. I've got my power routed into these power connections, and then internally, using the software, I tell the VPX that I want this pin to control this wire. I want this pin to control this wire. I want this pin to control this wire. And oh, by the way, I want that wire set to 4 amps. This wire, I can go as high as 10 amps, but I'm going to set it to 3, depending on what I have wired to it. So that's just a really super quick, very super basic overview on how this wiring is kind of coming together. It gets pretty involved. You really got to pay attention to what you're doing. You have to reference the VPX manual. You have to reference the wiring diagrams for the VPX. You have to reference the wiring diagram for whatever it is you're actually connecting. And if it has a manual, such as your transponder, your communications radio, your backup power supply, the VPX itself, all of that needs to be referenced and cross-referenced, and you have to kind of keep track of what's drawing what, you know, what's drawing two amps, what's drawing fifteen amps. Figure out your switches. Right, it gets involved. I personally enjoy it. Doing it this way, doing it myself, I learn everything that I need to know about this entire system. I know everything that this particular avionics package is going to have. I know exactly how it's going to operate. I know exactly where all the wires go, what they do, what size they are. It's, it's excellent, excellent, excellent to do it yourself. If you feel you've got the skill, if you feel that you can acquire the skill and have the time and the patience, if you have the patience, if you have the patience, <laughs> that's what I keep telling myself, I recommend taking a shot because... Um, to send it off to somebody and have them do it for you and bring it back and put it on your airplane, you don't understand any of it. You don't understand how it works. You don't understand how this communicates with this, through this, and over to that. So, again, if you feel relatively confident, take a shot. So, going back kind of to the beginning, I've got my uh, battery here. And I've got my, my uh, vertical power PPS. This, again, is the primary power system. I have a DC power supply here that I'm using to supply, to supply power to this system. So I have my connection here from the DC power supply. What's nice about the DC power supply is it's a very consistent regulated supply. And I can um, adjust the current, the max current. So I'm not going to burn anything up. If, which I could if I had the battery connected directly to this. So with the, the DC power supply set up and turned on, I get power supplied to this unit, and then this unit disperses that power through this connection directly into the VPX, and I believe I've showed you that before. I've got 
a master switch connected. I've got what's called a battery starter distribution switch connected. And of course, I got the power running to the VPX. So as of right now, I can turn on the DC power supply, which gives me power here. And then when I turn on that, that distribution switch, and then when I flip on the master switch, I get power here. And then, of course, that power gets transferred through the cable to the VPX. And I've verified that with a multimeter checking the different connections on the PPS. And I've also verified that the, 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 uh, the VPX is getting power because there are lights on, this, um, on these two ports here that, that uh, come on. So that's, that's working fine so far. My switches are working correctly so far. Now that I'm actually wiring the VPX itself, at some point I'm going to have to start adding switches and I'm going to have to get in here and do the programming to, to tell the unit how the switches are going to communicate with everything that I've got plugged into it. So that's kind of where I am. So it's just gathering up wires, and turning them into uh, wiring harnesses, and then bundling them up and trying to keep them neat and out of the way, which, of course, that is not the case at the moment. Another cool thing that, I, that I'm using, I'm using these little stick-on bundle connectors, if you want to call them that. They're stick-on just like the pads for the um, zip ties. Same idea, but these are great because they, uh, they latch and they're adjustable. So you can make them quite small or you can open them up all the way. You know, you can have it adjustable, basically. And they come in two different sizes. They may come in more sizes, but I have two. I've got this larger size here, and then there's a smaller size in this bag. I don't know how well you can see this one here. It's quite a bit smaller. But what's nice about those is you don't have to try to snake wire through them. You can unhook them like this. You can run your wire however you want to run it. You can do all your, your connections on the ends of the wire and then you just lay it in here. You can just fit the wire into these and then close them up which is really cool. And then if you want to add more wires to it later, you just open these up. And then again, you can, you can lay more wire in here. So I really like those. I'm, I'm going to use the crap out of those if I need to. And then uh, after I get everything finished, I'll come back and I'll gather all the loose ends up with the, uh, with the, um, the cord, do the lacing cord to gather up all the individual loose ends, so to speak. So that's where I am, um, just more of the same, just more referencing manuals, trying to get a game plan together, looking at pinouts and diagrams and graphs and charts and stuff and trying to get this put together. So I'm going to continue wiring up the wing tip lights once I get those ran to the VPX. I think I'll get a switch or two together temporarily and uh, try to get the software uh, uploaded so I can start programming that to make sure that the wingtip lights actually work the way they're supposed to work. And then I'll just continue on. I still have to wire my backup power supply. I've got a ton of switches I need to do. Uh, eventually I'll have to do my engine instrumentation. Once I get the engine hooked up and get all the sensors put put on the engine, I'll have to run all those wires things like that. I still got my comm radio to connect. I got to connect my transponder. I still have to run cable and antennas for both of those units. So, okay. Whew. So I'll get back into this and um, hopefully I'm going to try not to wait so long in between videos because I forget where I left off and I probably cover, I probably recover the same thing multiple times and I really don't want to do that. But there's not a whole lot to talk about because it's just wires and connectors. So not a whole lot changes. So again, thanks for putting up with me and uh, thanks for stopping in and I will talk to you guys later.